Stephen Miller uh, used to be a senior advisor for Donald Trump, and he was the director of speech writing for the president as well, which I'd love to talk to him about. <laughs> I'd love to talk to him about that, but we got to get to some important stuff first. He has just uh, founded, and he's the president of American uh, America First Legal, uh, and they are launching now an effort to get all the documents and find out exactly how the Biden administration is coordinating with big tech as Joe Biden just kind of spilled out the other day. Uh, They're kind of backtracking on that now, but do you have any doubt? Let's go to Stephen Miller. Hi, Stephen. Great to be on with you, Glenn. Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. So tell me what you guys are doing. Yes. So as the whole world saw a few days ago, Jen Psaki admitted in the White House press briefing that the Biden administration is actively coordinating with the tech conglomerates to deplatform, censor, and silence Americans. It goes without saying, although I'm going to say it, <laughs> that this isn't this isn't only authoritarian and wildly inappropriate, it's also unconstitutional. Oh, it is. And the reason it's unconstitutional is pretty straightforward, which is that the government cannot use any quote-unquote private company as an agent on its behalf to deprive somebody of a foundational right. So a very basic example of this that you might see in a Law & Order episode would be that if the government wants to search your home but doesn't have a search warrant, they can't ask a private security company to break into your house and take your files and then say, oh, well, we didn't do it. The private company did. Right. That's exactly what they're doing here with respect to free speech. But in order to stop them, we're going to need more than just Jen Psaki's admission, although you'd like to think that would be enough. We're going to need all the records, all of the emails, all of the documents that show this unlawful coordination. And you know, Stephen, you know it's happening. And it may not be on a whitehouse.gov email address, although I wouldn't put it past them. But you know this is going on. And even if they say, we're, oh, we're not doing it, and, you know, they have found a way around it, they they are talking to each other. I mean, it is the left... It has all of their people embedded in those places. Yes. Well, it's first of all, another reason why you cannot draw a line where big government ends and big tech begins is because of the entirely incestuous nature. Exactly. Staffing relationships between the two. They go back and and forth. They'll go from the White House to Facebook to Facebook back to the White House. Exactly. And 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 to the Capitol Hill offices in the House and Senate that supposedly oversee and regulate. And so, and I I have a unique vantage point here because in addition to serving in the executive branch for the last four years, I was on Capitol Hill as a staffer for almost a decade before that. And so I can tell you from firsthand knowledge and experience that many staffers on Capitol Hill dream of nothing else but getting to go work at a place like Google or Facebook or Twitter maybe. And so that's also part of this incestuous relationship. So you really can't tell where one ends and one begins. So how do we another s- important point go- here is yep. that is that the the White House and the majorities in Congress are actively talking about new legislation that will supposedly govern the rules of the road for big tech companies. Nope. Why does it matter legally? It matters legally because If you are saying, on the one hand, we have control over your business model, we have control over how you operate, and then the other hand, you send a request that says, would you, could you please deplatform this person? Hmm. In the law, what that means is that the, the company is effectively being coerced into doing your bidding. Now, I am definitely not making excuses for these companies. They they love they're run by radical progressives who hate everything that we believe. But I'm saying as a matter, it's also important that the government, as we speak, is talking about 
regulation and legislation sure. concerning big tech. Well, there's two things. There's two things on this. First of all, I don't know what you believe what happened with the Iran Contra affair, but I actually believe Oliver North didn't tell the president. Uh, the president may not have known. He just knew the president wanted to do those things and to keep to keep everything you know uh, safe. So the president could honestly say, "I didn't know." Um, I think that stuff happens all of the time. And sometimes they misjudge the president. Sometimes they, you know, the president's happy about it, I'm sure. Um, But I believe people take the initiative themselves to get things done. Um, And so the, the president, the president doesn't even have to be involved. They don't even have to say it. They just know that this is what they all want to do. And so they just do it. The, the 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 second thing is they also want regulation and it is exactly the same thing that happened with the three big automakers uh with fdr they went to fdr and or fdr went to the big three and to the tire companies and there were a lot of really good tire companies back in the 1930s and 40s and um fdr went to them and said you bf goodrich and you goodyear you guys come up with the regulation for yours, and Chrysler and uh, GM and Ford, you come up with the regulations because we need to regulate you. Well, all the regulations that were written benefited those companies and put everybody else out of business. That, that's, that's the kind of legislation you're going to get from uh, the United States at this yeah, point with these companies. Out. That is the quid pro quo. Yeah. And, and that is where it is an entirely symbiotic relationship where one needs the other. Big tech needs big government to protect its monopoly and big government needs big tech to censor dissidents. And, you know, the point you made about auto companies also applies here just to illustrate the truth of the example to Wall Street as well, which is the Dodd-Frank legislation. Yep was written by the people who were being regulated and written by the staffers who wanted to go work at those companies. Yeah. The end result was is to make so-called too big to fail even bigger and more uh-huh. powerful while killing the community bank. Yep, exactly right. Exactly right. So we know what's going to happen. We also have seen big talk from Republicans we're going to get tough on these companies, you know, uh, section 230, we're going to and nothing happens. So Stephen, what is going to happen now? What, what's the plan that you think would affect this? It's a great question. So first on the legislative front, because there is a lot of ongoing debate in the House and Senate about what legislation looks like. For what it's worth, my own view on this, and I believe Clarence Thomas pointed the way in his opinion that he recently wrote, I think that the large technology companies should be thought of as common carriers in the same way that your telephone company is providing a basic service. Your telephone company, your water company, et cetera, they can't turn off your water. They can't turn off your phone service because you express a heterodox view that's unpopular in Washington, D.C. Uh, I have very little confidence that that is the direction that Congress is going to go on. This. <laughs> from a le- <laughs> I can guarantee you. <laughs> yes. From a, from a legal standpoint, in the courtroom, the, the key is that we're going to have to most likely go and enforce this FOIA request in court. So FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, the way it works is that you have the right as a citizen, I have the right as someone leading a nonprofit group to access these records. They belong to the American people. These are your public servants. But oftentimes people in government do not comply with these mm-hmm. requests. And you have to file suit in Washington, D.C. I'm sure that's where it's headed. But the, the end goal is if we are successful in getting these documents and we are able to show this collusive behavior, then we will have established a true legal route for liberating victims of censorship and deplatforming because we'll be able to show that they are victims of government censorship. And the tech companies are simply doing the bidding of their government masters. Well, I mean, I don't know how you're, I mean, I'm sure there's not a uh, paper trail and contracts, but when you have the government and the Pentagon saying, you're going to be our cloud service, you're going to be, um, we're going to, you're going to be our uh, repository for everything that 
you, you wait a minute. You can't have that relationship with those guys because they're not going to want to piss you off. You're not going to want to piss them off. You get special favors because they're one of our biggest clients. It happens without even without even asking for it. It will happen. Correct. I mean, yes, that, that's a very important point. I mean, it, you know, to use like a perhaps a crude example, but the um, if the mafia and goes and asks a business owner very nicely yeah. uh, for five hundred dollars, they don't have to complete the rest of the sentence. Right. The, the, the understanding is there. Correct. Um, and these companies are completely reliant on government protection, government contracts, and government favors. And again, likewise, the staffers in the government who are, you know, think of themselves as very important people, they also think of themselves as entitled to make a very large amount of money. And the way they think that they are going to get a large amount of money as such important people is to leave Washington and go work for again, a Google or a Facebook mm-hmm. or a Twitter. Stephen, I, uh, I support you in, uh, in this and, uh, and thank you for fighting uh, anything that we or the audience can do to help you. The, the best thing that everyone can do is just go to visit our website, aflegal.org. That's aflegal.org. And you can sign up for our newsletters. You can read about our latest cases. You can join the team and help us not just on this issue, which is obviously of existential importance, but on all the legal battles that we're currently waging against the Biden administration. Uh, Stephen Miller, founder and president of America First Legal. It's aflegal.org. You can follow him on Twitter at Stephen M. Stephen, thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. God bless. You bet. 